Boker Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I know we got a little bit of an echo here. We're in our new office. We'll be working on the sound issues as time goes along there. So just ask that you bear with us here as we get things moving right along here. I want to go right into the uh, top stories that are going on. RT, of course, is kind of interesting. Mainstream media seems to be a little bit behind the eight ball when it comes to reporting the things that we cover. And uh, so they, have, they, they are reporting now that the U.S. is... Uh, has arrived in Europe and they're unloading their uh, equipment there in Germany. Uh, but what's really going on, by the way, uh, is a little bit different. Uh, the, actually, the tanks have already been, been there and unloaded and already made their way onto rail cars and are already en route to Poland. Uh, as well as we know that there is a lot of military that as well as headed to Poland that have already made it there and they've landed at the airport and moving into this region. Now, you cannot help but wonder, though, what's going on with all of this? Why are we seeing so much uh, troop movement, equipment movement? Of course, as the U.S. would tell you and European, NATO, whatever you might ask about there, they will all tell you that what is going on is that there is Russian aggression in this region of the world. And that's the reason why they say we have to have so much military equipment there. And of course, for Lat Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Estonia, all of these northern regions of Europe, which by the way, they changed the name recently to them being northern regions of Europe. But in reality, Russia is really not the aggressor. But it's interesting, even uh, Sputnik News is uh, putting out today that Ukraine conflict to escalate until Trump's inauguration. And Russia is still holding out that Donald Trump is going to calm this situation down with Russia, which I certainly hope he does. I know our broadcast yesterday did not make everybody happy by no means saying that uh, President-elect uh, Donald Trump saw, you know, has actually accepted the intel report from uh, the information that is coming out from the intel community uh, that where he had his meeting there. Uh, I'm still holding out as well that Donald Trump does not uh, escalate any issue with Russia, but you got to remember, Donald Trump has, even in his own campaign, uh, although he has very much been uh, aside with Russia, he's also stated that, you know, if, if, if he's treated fairly, then he will treat others fairly. But if there's something that doesn't go just exactly right, he's willing to use force where needed. But I am still, like many of you, I'm hold out that he will uh, restore some peace with Russia and we can get things calmed down a bit. But um, I'm not overly optimistic, I might say. Another reason why there's a big concern about what I'm seeing here with these tanks headed into Poland, and I think it has a lot to do with not just uh, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, nor even Poland for that matter. But if you look at Poland, if we look at where Poland is, of course, if you look here to the north here, you have Kaliningrad. This is where Russia moved nuclear uh, capable uh, ballistic missiles there too, but also on uh, Poland's eastern border there, we have Ukraine. And of course, Belarus. Belarus is a very uh, loyal ally to Russia. Uh, Ukraine, though, uh, it would make it much easier for the U.S. to bring in reinforcements to back up Ukraine. And I'm beginning to wonder this is where the hot spot is. Everybody's uh, attentions are distracted with Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. But really, what is Estonia for to begin with? This is just a nice, easy shot over there to St. Petersburg for the U.S. if in the event they end up in a war in Ukraine and decide to back up Petro Poroshenko. And that's where I think the main issue is coming down. Why there are so many tanks headed into there is because I have a very funny feeling that Ukraine is going to escalate and spiral out of control, and then they're going to send in reinforcements to help back Ukraine, even though they are not a NATO ally. Uh, clearly, though, as we've seen, uh, John McCain, the, the senator of the United States and former uh, presidential contender there, uh, he actually was there bolstering on the front line there with the, in the Donetsk region right down here on your screen, letting them know that the U.S. has their back uh, as far, not Donetsk, but as far as uh, Petro Poroshenko, the uh, neo-Nazi government that got installed there. Uh, not to say that Russia is a whole lot better. I'm just simply saying it, it was totally done wrong what happened in Ukraine. Uh, the former um, uh, president there, uh, Yanukovych there, was really completely done completely wrong. But there's no doubt a reason that they have why they're doing it. Moving on into the Middle East, Assad says he's ready to discuss everything and vows to take back all of Syria. 
which I find that would be very difficult for him to do in, in, in line of uh, looking that he is uh, faced with uh, a, a huge Turkish military presence in the, in the northern part of his country. And as well, even though Russia has packed uh, President Bashar al-Assad, Russia has also continued to make stronger and stronger ties with Erdogan. And Erdogan seems to be wanting to completely eradicate the northern part of Syria of any Kurds that are living in that region, not to mention his own country. So I, I'm just not, I don't think it's wise in what Putin is doing, but no doubt uh, his loyalty is not necessarily to Assad. It is still for his own national interest, and being an ally with Turkey seems to have a greater uh, meaning for President uh, Putin than it does uh, with President Bashar al-Assad. That being, and I've always stated, I felt like the coup was faked in order for um, Erdogan to be on the side of NATO and that he's only playing the card. I could be wrong on that. We'll have to see how things go as the future plays out on that. Another interesting news as well here is on Al uh, RT reported here, Al Jazeera, many of the, uh, of the people that have been working for Al Jazeera have actually put, turned in their resignations uh, as a result of all the propaganda that's going on in that part of the world. I want to share with you here just a clip here that's being played. This is one of the uh, girls here in Tel Aviv that is speaking about those resignations with RT's reporter there. Uh, as, a ref as a result of all the fake and staged news, the propaganda that Al Jazeera has been participating in, bringing out a lot of false news against President Bashar al-Assad of Syria. Listen to this. For us. So, Paula, tell us more about the accusations against the channel. Well, we're receiving information now about the reported resignations of key employees in Al Jazeera's Beirut office, and they are claiming that the channel has a very provocative stance and has been involved in agenda-setting biased reporting. These resignations include the managing director, the correspondent, and the producer, and specific reports that we are hearing, particularly from the correspondent, is that Al Jazeera refused to publish pictures of armed fighters clashing with the Syrian army and in addition also ignored a referendum on a new constitution in Syria. By comparison, the channel's coverage of events in Bahrain was minimal. It, it has practically ignored what has been happening there. In Libya, we are now receiving some Interesting to see, again, more and more propaganda machine. And what's interesting is how the United States is working on breaking down uh, fake news. And unfortunately, the fake news is being found in practically every uh, media outlet that is from the West. And no doubt, uh, I know there's uh, things that are exposed as well from those from the East, whether it be Russia, Syria, any of the other places. So for us, it's very difficult to kind of dig through it and find out who's doing what, et cetera, and things like that. Uh, this here is a very disturbing uh, images right here uh, that I wanted to share with you, and I do warn you, it's the, you don't see anything, well, I will not show you the graphic one, let me just put it that way there, but this here, uh, the picture of this little boy with a pistol in his hand, and of course the man he has just shot is laying at his feet there, uh, and you know, it just goes to show children do not have it in them to just be murderers. The little boy with his eyes closed, he's not wanting to do, but they are making animals out of these children. And uh, just very sad indeed. Here this boy is here. He, again, does not seem that he wants to be involved in this gruesome task of executing this man, but he has been put, no doubt, with a threat to his own life, probably, if he does not uh, get involved. The other image, as I said, I will not share with you. This is the little boy, again, though, that had the pistol in his hand squinting his eyes, doesn't want to be involved in what he has been forced to be involved in. Uh, I think it's an exploitation of children uh, beyond a magnitude of anything that anyone could ever possibly comprehend. Uh, you know, we just saw in the news the other day how that the uh, Saudis with U.S.-led uh, coalition have been sending a major convoy of equipment uh, to fight in Yemen. Uh, well, I don't know about the, uh, the initial huge convoy that they're sending there, but the Yemeni rebels destroyed the Saudi military convoy in the west of uh, Taez, according to this latest report right here. Um, and uh, so they did come under an ambush there. And uh, you, can see the, you can see the convoy there on the ground, moving across the ground very rapidly. Um, and then they're sending in these missiles. He's got one sitting still, so it becomes a sitting duck at that point. And, um, and sure enough, they take that one out. 
Uh, but you can see the other vehicles moving very rapidly. So, uh, of course, they go over there. They did not take out all the vehicles. No doubt what happened, the one vehicle probably broke down, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the convoy is already coming under fire in there. And kind of concluding out in the Far East, North Korea, and this was something that was really kind of an awkward situation to look at here. Uh, we're looking here, this is in North Korea, testing some of their ballistic missiles there. And uh, Ash Carter speaks about this as well in here where they're bound to shoot down the ballistic missiles. But what I thought that was so kind of awkward here is that uh, Kim Jong-un is, is prepared to do whatever he has to do and, and launch from anywhere that he needs to launch. And here he has taken his trucks, closed down the highway, just pulled out these missiles and put them right in the middle of the highway. That's something to be said for something that is uh, able to be moved at any time there. Uh, so yes, he just closed down the highway, put these missiles out there and launched them. One thing's for sure, you can't, you know, when it comes to uh, Kim Jong-un, it's a totally different world than that of uh, President Bashar al-Assad. We have seen clearly over and over and over again how President Bashar al-Assad has uh, been falsely accused. But in the case of Kim Jong-un, uh, it is continue one provocation after another, and I'm just afraid many innocent people are going to die as a result of his uh, wild behavior, uh, as well as the NATO, uh, especially the U.S., is not going to stand by and just let him keep uh, building up a nuclear arms uh, race there. Uh, Russia as well. Russia offers to conduct joint military exercise with the Philippines in the South China Sea. You want to talk about uh, probably getting the U.S. all bitter and anxious to see this, uh, but we kind of expected that this was going to be coming with the Philippines leader there because uh, he's called uh, John Kerry and Obama every name in the book you can think of when it comes to uh, uh, not very nice names, but Russia may end up playing a significant role in the hotly disputed South China Sea this year in a move that could shake up existing ties. Russian ships are considered conducting joint military uh, exercises with the Philippines to fight maritime piracy and terrorism, according to a report from the Russian state-run Sputnik News. Uh, this is according to Gavin and Fernando uh, that's reporting that. That kind of sums it up for this morning. Again, we're here we're uh, working from our new office as well as from uh, still from our uh, garage uh, <laughs> setting there at the house as well, uh, but we will be moving out of our house in a few months. We're having to try to get set up in our new office here so that we can actually continue to bring the news to you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.